So about a year ago, I saw that Dalguyaki created a video titled Watch This Before Applying to NUS Computing and I remember watching it at the time thinking Hmm, I wish someone would do this for medicine and it's been a year later and no one has done it so I thought I'll give it a shot But first, let me give a quick disclaimer Hi, my name is Jeremiah first year medical student at NUS and yes I'm only a first year student that has barely completed half a year at NUS so that does mean that my knowledge of the school is the most limited and contextualized to the first year but I still feel like I could give a decent and good overview of what being a student at NUS medicine is like. So starting off what is medicine and what are the job prospects of taking this course well I would hope it's pretty obvious but technically under the umbrella of the Young Rudin School of Medicine there is the Alice Center for Nursing Studies as well as NUS Medicine, the former trains undergraduate nurses and NUS Medicine trains undergraduate doctors. This is not to be confused with Duke NUS that trains postgraduate doctors. It is a five-year degree with a five-year bond if you are Singaporean, excluding your first year of housemanship of your first year as a doctor. So it is technically an 11-year commitment once you decide to come into this course. So on one hand, you are guaranteed a job, the job security. But on the other hand, you are kind of committed to this in the long run. So please, 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 please think very carefully before you decide to come for this course. So now I'm in one of the two main lecture halls that we use here in medicine to talk about the course structure and kind of teaching pedagogy. NUS elects to use a lecture tutorial system so you have lectures in this big lecture halls where students all come in together and they have professors teaching the lessons and then you have smaller tutorial and case-based learning classes afterwards. So the interesting thing about MED is unlike other courses, we really only take one module. You don't really get to choose your classes and we literally only take one module. Like seriously, it's called MD1140, normal body structure and function for the entire first year. And this is because the first year is dedicated to learning the normal function and physiology of the body going through each block culminating in one exam. We start off by learning the musculoskeletal system, so that's the upper limb and lower limb, and then you sprinkle in a bit of biochem, so your basic cells and all that kind of good bio stuff. Then we move on to the cardiovascular, respiratory, renal, and blood systems, which is the exam that I just did. The third block is the abdomen, pelvic, reproductive, and overall metabolism of the body. And lastly, we end off the year with the head and neck. The nervous system, histology, and anatomy is sprinkled throughout the year, so it's kind of based on the block you're learning. So you learn the nervous system related to the cardiovascular system whilst you're in the cardiovascular block, and so on. Then we also have ethics classes and patient communication workshops throughout the year. These classes focus on the soft skills of being a doctor. So how do you talk to a patient? How do you display empathy? How do you show you're caring for them? We also have hospital and polyclinic attachments where we get to see medicine being practiced firsthand. I remember this quite vividly. We had a morning tutorial on the upper limb body examination and because we had our clinic attachment afterwards, we went there and the first patient that we encountered, the first ever patient in medical school, presented with an upper limb injury and the doctor went through the examination that we just learned like 30 minutes prior. So it's really insane and amazing to see what you learn being actually practice and use. I think in the past prior to leading to university, what we learn may seem pretty abstract and we can't link it to real life scenarios but in medicine it's so applicable and it's just understand the little as we bumble all our way through the hospital as clueless first year medical students. I'm not going to go through the other years because one, I'm only a first year so I kind of haven't figured out the other years myself and everything's on the website or you can check out this other video that I made sometime back. <laughs> So that was the lecture and now we're in the multipurpose hall which is where the majority of our tutorials are conducted. We have our main sort of tutorial which is about 18 students to one professor so it's an intimate time for you to ask questions and the way the lessons are conducted is really dependent on you and the professor. Some profs want the students to prepare before class and they come and present to the rest of the class so we kind of teach each other and learn from one another. Some profs treat it like a mini lecture so they just go through their self-prepared lecture slides and then they kind of teach you the content again and some profs they like to ask questions to the students so they just go around asking questions so it really depends on which prof you get but it's nice because it's a two-way conversation often the profs will ask you what you need what are the weaker topics that you face what difficulties you have and from there you kind of work out a lesson plan that suits the both of you and these tutorial rooms are also where we have our collaborative learning cases clcs for short clcs are clinical application cases so often we'll come to class having done a pre-quiz and during the lesson we'll go through a case whereby an actor would have presenting symptoms we watch it on the video and we go through a series of questions that are designed to instill the concept to us and after the 
the class, we'll go through a post quiz to solidify the ideas that we've learned. So it's actually one of the better ways of learning and it really helps us to appreciate how medicine is practiced somewhat in the wards. The best part is that often the professors that are teaching the clinical cases are practicing doctors so they get to share their clinical experience with us and what would actually showcase in real patients. So it's kind of cool. CLCs are also really fun because the video actors are usually our professors so we do get a good chuckle when we see our favorite professors on screen and typically the lessons are conducted in our clinical groups of six of us so we all come together each group has their own whiteboard and then we'll just write down whatever answers we have to the questions on this board the profs will go around choose one group to present and then yeah we all learn from one another All right, so the doors are unlocked, probably because I'm back filming this during the holiday. Anyway, there are many practical facilities that we use as well to conduct practical sessions. I'm sitting outside our main lab that we use for histology, and histology is basically, in the most simplest way, the study of the microanatomy of the cells or samples that we have. So typically, we use dyes to elucidate the microstructures that we have present in the sample that we're looking at. So the lab in there is actually huge. When I first walked in, it was quite insane how big the lab was. There are probably 25 rows of benches, each bench having three microscopes on each side for one clinical group. And on there you have your prepared slides. So it's actually really impressive how much effort I guess the school goes into ensuring that every student gets a chance to use these microscopes. Typically when you go into lessons, the prof will give some brief introduction to what you're learning for the day. He may give a micro tutorial or micro lecture and then they give you the tutorial objectives then you kind of just let free to learn at your own pace. You can go through the slides by yourself so long as you meet the learning objectives. So in case you're still wondering what inside looks like, I have filmed in there quite a few times so I'll just play the clips. But yeah, it's like any other lab that you've seen before. It's just quite a bit bigger. And yeah, that's about it for the labs. Each one of these floors kind of have this outside learning space where you can just sit down and study. I know students do come quite often because it gets get quite cooling as it goes on. And I think there's this wind thingy that sort of makes it cooling. But yeah, we've been talking about microanatomy and now let's talk about cross anatomy, which are the structures visible to the naked eye. And now I'm outside the anatomy hall, which houses our silent mentors that we have here at NUS. Silent mentors are the incredible and generous donations of people that have pledged their bodies towards science. On the wall, you're able to see these individuals that we are also grateful for as they give us such a valuable learning opportunity to learn the structures beyond a textbook and really have a greater appreciation for what we're looking at. We have weekly sessions where we come by to focus on learning the anatomy of that particular block. They'll typically have many stations prepared, each one focusing on a specific detail or specific region of the body that we have to pay special attention to. Typically, we also have practicing radiologists that come down and teach us how to look at x-rays and CT scans to, again, better appreciate what we're learning. And upstairs, we also have the anatomy museum. It's open to all anywhere as medical students and we can go in anytime during office hours. There are prepared specimens there that have been preserved for 50 to 60 years and there are literally hundreds of samples up there all very delicately and specially and carefully prepared for us to look at. The Anatomy Hall and Museum is really an incredible privilege that's afforded to medical students. It's quite surreal to think about how these people have really trusted us with their most precious resource being their bodies and it's all to help us learn and become better doctors or future doctors one day and it's quite sobering and it's something that we constantly remind ourselves of, of the weight of this profession. NUS also tries to integrate technology into the learning of anatomy and one of the key ways to do that is through the Virtual Integrated Human Anatomy Experience or VIHA for short. It's basically wearing VR goggles and you have this remote that kind of controls the human body and kind of moves it around, dissect the different layers and it's typically pre-prepared classes where you hear the profs do this at your piece and then just kind of go through the lessons which is kind of cool. There are some benefits to this program especially for structures that require a more 3D spatial visualization, but if you do tinker around with it too much and move around too much, you can get quite dizzy. But of course, we also have to learn anatomy on the go, which is why every student is given an iPad Air plus Apple Pencil and a year subscription to Complete Anatomy. And Complete Anatomy is or might well be the best app to learn anatomy ever. So it's really awesome because you literally get to peel back the different layers and you can kind of click on each one of the muscles and just peel back and look at the organs and kind of spin this thing around and zoom in and whatnot yeah it's kind of hard to show it right now 
but it's really helpful when learning the relations of organs so let's say for the heart what's to the upper lower left and right of it and how does it relate to the rest of the body which one comes in front anterior which one comes behind posterior and it was also really helpful when learning the hundred or so upper plus lower limb muscles combined which you do pretty much have to memorize so we're currently outside the center for healthcare simulation and in here it houses all the different simulation machines that we have so the two that we've used so far are the harvey and simman and for the harvey i'll just play an old clip of me explaining it today we have harvey so this is a simulation and practice associations on the body and we wear the stethoscope thingies which has the box at the bottom which they're able to link up straight to the machine so we're able to hear the harvey which is fine but the harvey is pretty helpful because our tutors are able to control and play specific disease sounds so for example a cardiac murmur in a specific valve of the heart and right down this hallway we have the simulation operating theater and within there we have something called the sim man and the sim man is basically a simulation man which helps us prepare for emergency situations and it's honestly been one of my favorite parts of medical school so far so when we go in for lessons the tutor will typically give us some case history so say this patient came in after a car accident and has been rushed to er he's semi-conscious and yeah you're just kind of left to handle this patient on your own, it allows you to see the vital signs of the patient. So be the ECG, the heart rate, the oxygen saturation, the jugular venous pulse and yada yada yada. And literally the patient will start to deteriorate as the case goes on. There's someone in the back controlling it because it is a simulation. And one of the most interesting cases that we've had so far is attention pneumothorax. So it's basically chest building up in the pleural space between your chest wall and your lung. And because of that, it's compressing your lungs. You can't expand the lungs properly. And then there's even a shift in some of your structures which go to the other side and one of the treatments or literally the treatment is to insert a needle into your upper region of your chest and it's allowing the air to escape so your lungs are able to expand so it's literally out of a doctor mic or the good doctor scene and so finally we're in the house room that appears quite a lot in the videos so NUS Mac kind of has this like Hogwarts Harry Potter house system as well you kind of spin to 10 houses and you kind of stick with this throughout all five years of medical school and this place is kind of unique to medicine it's a really nice spot to just come you can study you can host meetings or even sleep back there should you choose to and it's also a nice place where juniors can come to meet seniors because all students throughout the five years have access to this place and this leads quite nicely to talk about some of the support systems that we have here in medicine so you start off with your pinnacle group or cg and it's a six of you and if you're close and bonded it's really like your new family we stick together for all lessons lectures tutorials practicals hospital attachments basically everything and these are the people that appear the most in the videos and it's the people that you see all the time but sadly they do change after the first and second year with them sticking together for years three to five when we actually start going to the hospitals more regularly then you have your house which is why the house room exists it's a group of 28 of you and your house committee would typically organize events for you or social bonding events barbecues dinners beach days cycling anything another huge support system are seniors and they are senior teach junior sessions where these seniors really take time out of their busy schedule because they have exams as well and they conduct mini crash courses and small group tutorial sessions with you to kind of coach you through the material to ensure that you'll be doing well for the exam you're able to see some of the pictures of old seniors because the culture of seniors helping out really does ring through and it's built into the culture of medicine also if you do stay on campus and you do have seniors that stay in your hall they also form an amazing amazing support system and i'm very thankful for the support that I have where I stay in Tembusu. Of course, you also have staff support, be it the Office of Student Affairs or the school counsellors. They also have house mentors, and house mentors are basically practicing doctors. Some of them may be graduates from your house, like when they were medical students, and they kind of just coach you through what the journey would be like, what can you prepare yourself for, what are some of the ups and downs, and how do you deal with that as you go on, and it's really nice to hear from these people that sort of made it through medical school. So for the last part, as we overlook NUH back there to what the future may possibly hold, being a doctor and possibly working there one day, I want to talk about some of the difficulties that you may face when coming to this course. I think it's needless to say, or there's no point sugarcoating it, medicine is a tough course. It's something that would or might possibly be the hardest academic challenge that you'll face. And it's sometimes not even about the sheer amount of content or the difficulty or the complexity of learning the human body. It's the responsibility of knowing that whatever you learn is so important and would be helpful and applicable to you in the future. As my senior put it, what is high yield is what is most likely going to present in a patient in the future. But a patient may come in with a low yielding and if you never learned it, you'll one day have to face the responsibility of not being able to save your patient. So there's a huge gravity and weight behind everything that you're learning and it's something that 
you have to really hold on to as you learn through all the difficult medical techs and hundreds and thousands of disease that you learn. Another huge thing that may pop up is imposter syndrome or feelings of inadequacy. In medicine, you are surrounded by some of the best and brightest people in the country and you just look at your peers and how amazing they are and you sometimes may feel like you can't compare to them but I think what really makes this better is the support systems that we talked about before it's only been a short time but I just feel like the people you meet in med you look at them and you just know that they'll be within your inner circle for the rest of your life and they're some of the most amazing and wonderful people I've met is within my CG for example they form some of my closest friends in medicine or even extending out to your house or where you stay on campus and because medicine is such a close-knit fraternity you're literally going to be with these people for the rest of your life they're going to be your colleagues your bosses or even part of your new family overall I think that if you do want to come into medicine you do have to take a decision very very seriously really consider whether this is something that you want please do not come in for the wrong reasons if you get what I mean and if you do decide to come in hold on to whatever reason you have for coming in as it would really guide you through as I've heard from a lot of people that I've spoken to it's most likely going to be a lifetime decision that you are making at a relatively young age so yeah just really 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 to consider carefully before you come in all right and this was literally a behemoth video to film it took about three hours i know i didn't really show too much about the school there are some parts that i didn't film and i just kind of put footage here and there but if you want to see like a proper school tour i could consider making that video but yeah thank you all so much for watching have a nice day and i'll see you on the next one bye